is it possible that God could have given the children of Israel manna, gave them a food source, gave them a food source that had never been seen, heard, or tasted before. God gave them a food source called manna. And he gave it to them for 40 years. It was not a part of the original process of creation. In the six days when God, God created the heaven and the earth, it wasn't a part of that. The, the wheat, the barley, the rye, and whatever else it, it was that man would eat ultimately. God had put everything in the earth and then put its seed within itself so that the earth would be sustained and a humanity would be sustained. There was no need for any new creation of anything. But for 40 years in the wilderness, God fed the children of Israel with manna. That manna that he fed them had never been seen or tasted by men or no angels, I would be willing to, to go ahead and say now, until God gave it to them. So when I say the word atla, when I, when I say that, and that word atla has sustained this ministry it is a word that had never been heard by men nor angels. And of course, I always invite, and I want to back away a little bit now from saying you don't have to believe it. The issue is you cannot not believe it. You, you, you cannot say it's not true. Because to say it isn't true, you would have to have some corresponding truth. And I've got the meaning of the word, the prophecy itself, the power of it, and the biblical correlatives to demonstrate that it was spoken by God. So to our young people that is sitting out in our schools, our classrooms, when you talk or teach or learn about manna, the children of Israel was eating something that did not evolve from the sixth day of creation. It was a new food source came from heaven directly to them and to them only. A new food source that had come directly. So when I say Atla or you say the word Atla, Atla, you are speaking a word that no man or angel had ever heard till God spoke it to me. I call it new manna, a new word from God. And a new word, by the way, spoken in Western civilization. A new word that no, the, the verse sound thereof had never been heard before. So what does that mean for, for us? What, it means that, okay, that God has de designated, like with Israel, a chosen people, the Hamite people. I'm a son of Pharaoh. I'm a Hamite. And God has chosen and sent me as a prophet, if you will. God has sent me as a prophet to the Hamite people in the Western civilization, culture, and time that God has sent me. And he has sent me to consecrate the land. Atla, falling on his Harlem. There are times now when I look out over the past 20 years, 30 years, the demons, as we now understand praying against demons, the demons flooded this community. The demons flooded Harlem. They came by droves with their banks, with their money, with their power. They all moved up here to Harlem. They flooded the community. The demons did. Tore down churches, tore down the culture, tore down the restaurants, tore down the dwelling places, tore it all down and set up their new culture here in Harlem. The demons did. And for the past 30 years, once outlaw was spoken, because I had said to the indigenous people of the community that God has sent the word, I said, you know, this is a beautiful community. This is a beautiful community, I said to the people, before the demons flooded the community. 
I said, I've, I've traveled the world. I've, I've, been, I've been around all the major cities of the world. This is a beautiful community. Now, they didn't see it. The indigenous community did not see it the same way the children of Israel didn't see Corinth, didn't see the, the manna as a power of God. They did not see that manna was a blessing unto them. Ultimately, they began to complain about it. But I said to the indigenous people, that's the Hamite, the black people, I said, this is a beautiful community. One of the most, one of the most beautiful communities on planet Earth. They didn't see it. They did not see In fact, they rejected my statements. And so the, 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 the demons moved up here. So tonight when we go into prayer and power over demons, we, here's what you want to pray. You want to pray, thank God that you are casting the demons out of Harlem. Now, it's one thing to cast demons out of a person. But it's another to cast demons out of Harlem. Now, Atla, recent reports that one of the, uh, Don Lemon, a celebrity on television, CNN, married to a white man. They've moved. They've been cast out. And a report came in the news recently that 32,000 were cast out of Harlem in the year 2020 alone. 32,000 were cast out. So tonight, when we, when we go into our 7 o'clock fast, everybody listen. We will celebrate the casting out of demons out of outlaw to wherever soever they may be, that the land may be returned to the indigenous people as beautiful as it is, and that we might occupy fully the land. Now, when the first children came out of Egypt, they had no idea of the promises and the prophecy that Moses, and so God let them die in the wilderness. But the second generation that God is now talking to in Deuteronomy and reminding them of the power of the manna, I'm reminding us of the power that God has given us a word that had never been heard, a word that had never been, no one had ever heard it until God spoke it to us. That's how much God has singled out. And that's the kind of power. That's the kind of power that God has placed over the renaming of Harlem and its ultimate being a righteous land. And the judgment that God has given that is commensurate with Western civilization, God establishing himself in Western civilization and the prophecy that Noah gave over Canaan regarding his being a servant to both Japheth and to Shem. It's an extraordinary, extraordinary word that God has given and so tonight, we want to give thanks for the casting out of demons, and more are going. There are times when I look out. If you'll look behind me now, just look behind me just at this moment. There's a woman on my left shoulder. She's moving a stroller now, and she's moving that stroller towards north on, on Lenox Avenue. If you'll just take the time to just watch, you will notice that the population on Lenox Avenue, you won't have two years or three years ago to compare it to, but the population is becoming more and more Ham Hamite and less and less Japheth every day. In fact, I stood in my window for hours on this past Sunday uh, to see what kind of church worship would take place. I saw only one person in a matter of three hours that looked like they might have been going to a church somewhere. But what I also found very interesting is that of 95% of, of, of the people that walked the streets for four solid hours as I looked out my window and observed to take note, 95% of them were Hamites and only 5% of them were Japheth and they may not have been community dwellers. God is casting out the demons. He's ca he's, and there's a revival happening in the Outlaw World Missionary Church in general, and a revival happening in the community as God is casting out demons. So we thank God. We thank God for the, the power to pray and fast and pray for the casting out of demons. Now, what does that mean for someone that's in Seattle or Washington? What does that mean uh, for Brother Amen uh, that has been... Uh, 
uh, supportive of Obama. What does that mean for people that are that are in in England or in Australia? What does that mean? It means that God shall bring you here to this land as well, and it means that you are supporting, you are giving prayerful support to a prophecy that is like it's like the it's like the manna. When the manna was being eaten by the people of, of, the, of, of Israel, they had no idea of the great and unusual blessing. And nobody in the last 8,000 years, no one in the last 8,000 years have been able to eat manna. Nobody. They had a, for 40 years, they had food from heaven that no one in the last 8,000 years have been able to eat. But they were able to eat it. We have a word spoken. We have a word spoken, Atla, that no man has ever heard. God has given to us for the past 30 years. For the past 30 years, God has given us a word that no man has ever heard. Not the men, nor angels, not even the Jews themselves, nor Moses, not Jeremiah. No one has ever heard until God gave it to us. So it's important as we go into tonight's prayer meeting and the casting out of demons, that more of the demons be cast out. Now, from that pro, from there, we need to get, then begin to develop the understanding of what it takes to occupy this beautiful land, what, what, it, what, it, what it takes to obey the commands of Almighty God. So the subject matter now of the past two days is Atla is new manna. Atla is new manna. Atla is new matter that comes from heaven. You know, I was suppo- I have to tell you that when I first heard the word, as you heard me say, that I too did not like it. I didn't. I confess that I didn't. But after God demonstrated to me that the first city in the Bible was named Havilah, the first city, and that every name of power in the Bible ends the same way that Atla ends in L-A-H, and A-H in particular, there's no way I could refute it. And it's, I want to encourage the hearts of everyone, especially our youth, that every time you say Atla, you are speaking a word directly from God to the, whoever the person is that will hear it. I'm excited about this process. I'm excited about where God has taken us um, in, in this time. One final thing that I, I, I want to, uh, that I'm going to conclude with some extraordinary singing that God's put in our house as well of late, and that is this, is that we are in the period of the tribulation. There's no doubt about it. All you have to do is just look around the world and see the things that are going on, and we are in that period. We also need to understand that Noah, who was the first preacher that preached during a time in Eastern civilization that God was displeased with humanity and that he was going to wipe it out, and he did so in the flood. And everybody agrees with that. Now, there's a lot of disagreement about the tribulation, but we're in that period of time, and only Noah and his sons and daughter-in-law and his wife, Mrs. Noah, were saved during that period of time. We are in a period now where God has spoken that he's going to destroy humanity. And I believe, I believe, I don't have as an absolute prophecy. Um, If you ask me to stake my seat in heaven, I'll say it, yes. But I believe that when Jesus returns, that when Jesus returns and he's coming back again, that when Jesus returns and he's coming back again, that the Lord Jesus Christ, that the Lord Jesus Christ will set foot the first time in Western civilization on 123rd Street. I was talking with one of our evangelists about our acquiring a new building, and I've been considering that, whether you know, our ministry needs new space. We need, we, 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 I don't even have a decent studio that's soundproof. There are a lot of things that we just need to do. And there are a number of programs that I'm now working with new leaders and developing in the church that are just, they will be ex- exposed over the next few months. These programs and developments in evangelism need new spaces to operate from. We don't have it in this present building. But I'm so in love with this building. 
I don't know if I would want to go anyplace else. And the other thing is that I believe that because this is the building that Atla was spoken in. There's a room in the home where Elizabeth and I live where the word Atla was first heard. It'd be very difficult for me to ever want to leave this building and go someplace else. However, we can do that. And if we will, we will. But I have to let you know that I believe when Jesus returns, it's going to be to 123rd Street. I believe that. Now, you can argue, no, when he comes back, he's going to Rome. Go ahead. I've been there. I doubt it. Oh, he goes, when he comes back, he's coming to Jerusalem. I've been to Jerusalem, too. I baptized in the Jordan River. I don't think so. But you're entitled to believe that. But I'm thankful to, to, to Almighty God. And I, I, I believe that, and I'm going to spend every ounce of energy that I have, every ounce of strength that I have to sweep the streets of this community, formerly known as Harlem, so clean that when Jesus comes back, that Jesus can take off his shoes and walk barefoot. I'm dedicated to it. Nothing can turn me around. And nobody can turn me around. No office, no marching army can turn me around from the mission and the vision of Atla because I believe that Jesus will come back. And when he comes back, I want to hear him say to me, James David Manning, well done. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Well done when he comes back. Because he's coming back. He's coming back. Well done. I want to ask you. You say, well, Pastor, I live in Sydney, Australia. I, I may never get to Harlem. You can support me. You can pray for me. You can support the ministry. You can financially support. You know we need it. You know we, you know we do. You know we need you to get down on your knees and pray and make sure your tithes and your offerings are coming here. And I think the other thing is that when you do that, all my, in fact, I don't think, I know that the Lord will bless you. Our school, we need a bigger spaces for our school. And we need to be able to be secure in the things that we do here. So you can help us. You can pray. You can give. And I'm convinced that God will bless you. So if we look again at the street behind me, at the number of people, the kind of persons that are walking the streets now, the community is now returning to the indigenous people. Though they're poor, they're ill-clad, many of them on canes and crutches and wheelchairs. But that's okay. That's all right. We can deal with that. We don't see the great hordes of the Japheth and the demons that once possessed this land, the vision it's happening in real time. I'm James David Manning, everybody. I'm the Lord's servant. This is symbolic. It's where Jesus was baptized. It's where John baptized. And so this is not a rebaptism. It's just a symbolic, if you will, act of what we're going to do, being in the water at, at the place where Jesus was baptized. And what I'd like to do is to baptize today that we would come to terms with the understanding of what God is calling for in righteousness. The, uh, he's not calling for prosperity. He, he isn't calling for culturalism. God is calling for righteousness. If we would commit ourselves to fulfill all righteousness, and God has called us to be persecuted for righteousness sake, as John was persecuted for righteousness, and so Jesus. I got to tell you that I'll never forget this experience of actually um, stepping in the water where Jesus was baptized, where John is baptized so many people. This is such a historic and a powerful, powerful sight. Just to touch the water uh, was so critical. And I'm glad that people got baptized to have that experience. Uh, it was a safe experience and a great experience. I'm not even going to change my clothes. I want to just stay in baptism mode until I get back to the hotel. So that's what I want to say. Amen. All right. This has been live from the Jordan River. <laughs> God bless you all. Peace. <laughs> Righteousness. Boom, chuckalaka goes right there. Over the years, we have served more than one million meals to hungry bellies and hungry people here in the Harlem community. 
And I wanted you to be able to see that. I want you to see our involvement with youth, our summer youth programs, the uh, our courtyard being used as a um, a place where children can be safe, guarded, and protected as they have their miniature swimming pools, um, and a safe place for children to eat that is guarded, that is protecting, protected by our own sense of security, and the wholesome and fresh meals that. Um, that we serve. We, we wanted you to be able to see the mission of this church. And we've been doing this for years. Just recently, one of our members, more than a 30 year member of this church, but it hasn't, not one that, you know, that you would probably find as members of some other churches with their nose stuck up in the air. But her father is now close to death or very sick in the state of South Carolina. And uh, what I said to her, well, I said, well, because she doesn't have money, I said, we will buy you a bus ticket, a round trip bus or train ticket for you to travel to South Carolina to, to be with your father in this time of pandemic. There's very little funding around. There's, there's sickness everywhere. And and she, the thing that just blew me away was she said as she was talking to Elizabeth, she said, but how are you going to do that to, to pay for me a round trip ticket to, to travel and give me expense money. And because you, know, you got to, Pastor Manning has to feed the children. He has to take, he has to educate the children. He has to buy school supplies for them. He has to pick them up in the mornings and take them back. And then he's got the ministry he has to take care of, all the bills of running the church, of keeping a major house like our house operational, keep the lights on, keep the, how are you going to be able to do that? And she was almost reluctant to take the money because she felt that it would be better served by feeding the children. We gave it to her anyway. But we want you to know that we do a work in this community. There have been a lot of lies told on us. And it's almost unimaginable why some of the people that have lied on us. But I can tell you behind all of it is the LGBTQ community. They don't want us to be successful, but we are, and we're going to continue to be successful in serving the meals that we're serving and serving the people that we are. And the LGBTQ community will not take us down. They are not going to take our church, yet they have defamed us. They've written ugly newspaper articles about us. They've marched against us. They've done a whole lot of ugly things. But you see what we have done and that's not even the half of our service to children and to the needy in terms of our homeless shelters and the things that we've done over the years. And we will continue. And probably the lies and the smears and the ugly newspaper articles and the wicked spirits and the so-called I ain't for the black man, that is not going to go away. I don't expect it to go away. I don't. But I do tell you this, that we will succeed against all of that, for God is with us, and I am his servant.